Good morning YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. With a video about my daughter's Chautauqua. Funny word, Chautauqua. Apparently it means a journey through time and space in order to come to an understanding of life, the universe and everything. First time I ever heard of it was when I was reading Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance by Robert M. Persig, who was travelling across continental USA on a motorcycle with his son. This little feather fellow travelling across my clearing behind his mother. So anyway, that's what a Chautauqua is, a great big long journey to learn a bit more about yourself. And for a bit over a month, my daughter has been driving solo circumnavigating the island clockwise. Initially, she went and worked at Byron Bay at the Blues Festival, where she was a volunteer, which meant that she got free camp. Let's try that again with rock lumps on the corners. So as I was saying, free camping or you know, greatly reduced rate, something like $20 a day or something. And she didn't have to pay for tickets to enter the venues. So yeah, that was a nice little holiday. Followed by a bit of a stay halfway between here and Grafton. And then a little bit of couch surfing as far as Sydney. After Sydney, she went down to Canberra, bought a new tent, went and stayed at Bateman's Bay for a bit, or near Bateman's Bay. And through the miracle of the small message service, I get to keep in touch and see the new camp and the new tent in some detail. Isn't technology marvellous? Electronic holiday snaps from Bateman's Bay. After Bateman's Bay, she toddled on down and couch surfed at a couple of people's places at Melbourne. And she went across to Mount Gambia, and I got a few more pictures of the Great Ocean Road, looking suitably picturesque, as you can see, as well as a shot of the daughter child, looking remarkably like Sarah Connor, driving off into the badlands before the world turns to shit. At Mount Gambia, she uh, had a couple of days being sick with a head cold or the flu, in a tent, in the wind, in the rain, kind of miserable. And uh, she was camped beside a lake where there was a model aeroplane club. So I got sent a picture of this uh, Sea Ray, kind of a rare and unusual model aeroplane. Flying boat. Amphibian. Because as she told them, she grew up with her father and her brother playing with radio control model planes. And then on a lake, the Radio Control Model Plane Club goes in for floats and seaplanes. So the other side of the uh, four days at Mount Gambia is that while she was sick, she uh, encountered a bit of a guardian angel type. Old fella called Kevin, who uh, he not only decided to put her up at his place and you know, feed her and give her a spare room for the night so that she could set out early in the morning without having to wait for the tent to uh, dry out because it develops condensation on the inside. But when little Missy decided that she wasn't using the picnic set much, she left it with Kevin and he packed it up and posted it back here to me. So, excellent Kevin, thank you very much for that. I dips me lid, takes me hat off to you. Okay, so uh, once she moved on from Mount Gambia, she went through Adelaide to a place called Wallaroo. So after staying the night with a friend made entirely of internet, couch surfing again, she moved on to a free camp a bit past Wallaroo. And the photos started to come in again. Looks like pretty barren goat country to me. Got a shot of the camp, showing the new tent. The tarpaulin, now she's got the hang of actually pitching it at a steep angle so it'll shed water and wind. 
and the little RAV4 LE in behind it. Leaving that campsite, the message says, leaving a pillar springs now, apparently the universe loves me. Where the sign on the tree says, love you, Lizzie. Which we're going to blame on Kevin, or attribute to Kevin, from Mount Gambia, because apparently not only did he top her up with groceries and give her a $50 gift voucher, but he also booked and paid for a night for her in a budget hotel at Port Augusta when she got there after leaving a pillar springs just out of Wallaroo. So he certainly is a dedicated guardian angel is Kevin from Mount Gambia. Oh by the way here's one I missed confronted by the giant lobster my daughter says Australia is ridiculous She's got a point. Leaving Port Augusta, she found they had a sundial in their botanical gardens, which perhaps may have made her childhood seem a little bit less weird, perhaps, because she grew up with the whole house running on sundials. So, the botanical gardens are cool. Night of the 19th and 20th at the free camp at Air. Camp's packed up on the way to Seduna on the 20th. At Seduna, having grown up among the windmills, of course, she found some windmills to photograph. A veritable windmill convention, actually. Must be bloody near a dozen of them. All in one spot, which I think is very, very impressive. So at about this point in the proceeding, she lets me know just what a tight budget she's on because she's doing this out of a saving she's not even on the dole um, $15 a week to the bloke who's looking after a cat $100 a week for fuel $15 a week for rice and lentils so I took the uh, silver change cubicle containers that she made me for birthday presents over the years into the bank and transferred it. All $44.70 of it. Oopsie, $45.70 into her account, which she received on reaching the eastern end of the Nullarbor Plain. And as you can see, she's very pleased with herself, even showing off her tongue bars, taking a selfie in front of the sign, saying one month down, three to go. Turns out I'm not the only one marking a map, although I've got to say, my map's a little bit more accurate than hers <coughs> up here at the start, because hers omits the detour to Grafton. She really did like posing Ellie beside the sign. I'm sure you can guess what that one looks like at full zoom. Then we had a fairly extended discussion about sunrise where I attempted to explain that every 15 minutes below that every 15 degrees the sunset moves an hour to the west so we figured out she had one hour and 36 minutes before sunset so she needed to sort of stop and make a camp which happened just inside the West Australian border between Border Town and Eucla, I think. And then when she got to the Lake Air Bird Reserve in the middle of the Nullarbor Plain, she found the money in the bank account and sent me the receipt 
showing how she'd bought fuel with it. $44.30 worth of fuel, uh, 21.7 litres. $2.04 per litre. Petrol price in the middle of the Nullarbor Plain. Whereas hereabouts, I'm only paying $1.61.9 cents per litre. Here in Glen Innes, and I'm probably paying 20 cents a litre more than they are in Sydney. And out there, she's paying 40 cents a litre again on top of that. So, that's where the Chortaqua is at momentarily well into Western Australia, heading for the more civilised built up regions where petrol prices are not quite so bad. And I don't know when she started the regime, but she did share one fascinating little facet with me. As well as living on rice and lentils for $15 a week, spending $100 a week on fuel, the little darling must have paid attention to my fuel saving habits because she's driving at 70 kilometres per hour for increased fuel economy. And she's one third of the way around the island continent of Australia, cruising at 70 k's in Ellie, the little old RAV4. And here's another photo pair that she sent me from Border Town to say, P.S. Their kangaroos are bigger than yours. But as I said to her, over there they have western reds, here we have eastern greys, and everybody knows that reds are bigger than greys. And yes, it is in fact holding a jar of Vegemite, a giant humongous jar of Vegemite held by an oversized western red kangaroo at Border Town on the Nullarbor Plain which, as the cognoscienti will already be well aware, is not at all an Aboriginal word. It's called the Nullarbor Plain because null is Latin for none and arbor is Latin for trees. It's the no tree plain. Nullarbor. And our right brother. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Once again, a very big thank you to Kevin. Ciao.